This is Ninja's new double stack XL 9.5 litre air fryer and it's something totally different. I haven't actually seen any air fryer like this before. Quite interested in the way it looks. I mean, the only reason I can think that they would actually make one this way rather than a normal shape, obviously longer, is because it actually takes less room on your worktop and you can fit it underneath a wall unit, uh, which would be quite handy, obviously. It takes up a lot less space. Now let's open it. I haven't actually used it. I haven't actually opened it at all. I've literally just taken it out of the box. Now, Ninja air fryers normally, all you do get is what you see. You don't get anything inside. But in this case, you do actually get couple of bits inside. You do get an extra shelf inside for cooking. Let's take this box down for a second. For cooking with two layers. You see, and it does go, it's a bit of a tight fit, so I'm a bit worried you might actually end up scratching the sides over time. Uh, it has actually got also a space in the back, I presume, to let the air come through, because in this case, let me just tilt this up a little bit. In this case, if you can see, you have actually got the fan at the back in a normal air fryer, you would actually have it on the top. In this case, because it comes from the back, it blows from the back. That's why you can probably do two layers and why it's going to cook a little bit more accurately. Right, so let's actually have a look at the, at the shelf. There we go. Fairly standard. I mean, for my other air fryer, I have actually bought a couple of these off eBay for, I think, about £5 for both of them. Now, let's actually have a look at the label. As you can see, it does show you a picture of a double stack cooking, which would be quite interesting to see how it actually cooks on two layers. So I, I am actually going to use both layers. Um, but okay, let's have a look at the bottom one as well, and that is exactly the same. We have actually got our shelf in there as well. I wonder if you can actually put the drawers around yet. Yeah, you can actually swap the drawers down as well, so they will fit on both levels. Okay, so I'm going to go through a few statistics of the air fryer to start with. Right, okay, and the weight is to start with 10.3 kilograms. Now, when I lift it, I can actually feel it is heavy. <laughs> it is actually quite heavy compared to my other air fryers. My other ninjas tend to be around about 8.5 to 9 kilograms. So this is actually about between one and one and a half kilograms heavier. So it does actually make a difference, but I suppose once you actually put it in place, you're not really gonna to have to move it around too much. Um, right, okay, and the cooking temperatures, I'll go through the cooking temperatures in a minute, but first of all, I'm gonna measure up the dimensions for you to have a look at. The height is about 38 centimeters, uh, which is about 15 inches. So it should comfortably fit underneath a unit. If you've got a unit on top, the depth of it is, including the back, is actually 39 centimeters. So yeah, it's about standard depth. And the width of it is roughly from the top, and we go on the other side. So from the top, if you possibly can see that, it's gonna be about 24 centimeters. But if I include the actual little bit that sticks out, we're looking roughly about 27 centimeters, 28 centimeters maybe. 27 maybe, let's go again. Uh, so it's about 23 and about 28. Okay, so obviously it's gonna take up a little bit less room. Okay, now the temperature is between 240, let's actually switch it on. The temperature is actually between, so let's go air fry to start with. Uh, function one, I forget how to use it now because like, I've never actually used it before. So we've got air fry, max crisps, bake, roast, reheat and dehydrate. It's not actually touch screen. You do actually have to use a dial. So you can have the temperature set. I believe the maximum one max crisp is actually 240 degrees. So it's pretty high, pretty good. Uh, you can actually knock that all the way down as far as I know as a temperature. There's a temperature. As far as I know, you can just, should come all the way down to 60. I'm sure I read in the instructions it comes down to 40. So let's just change that again. Let's just put that on air fry because an air fry there might actually come down to 40 degrees. And let's do temperature. Okay, so they're all set at different temperatures. This only comes down to 150. Now I did read, I'm pretty sure I did read that it's from 40 degrees to 240 degrees. So it's quite a good variety in temperatures. Right, so I'm gonna go through some of the basic use of the air fryer. If you have used a Ninja before, you should be quite familiar with it. It's got quite a nice, clear, bright uh, display on it this time, actually. Sometimes they're slightly dull, but this one actually actually quite bright, which is good. I'm gonna switch it off to start with. Switch it back on. Now, if you're just cooking in this, for instance, let's say you're just cooking in the top uh, oven or basket, you push number one, you choose what you want. Like I said, you've got air fry, max crisp bake, roast, reheat, dehydrate. Let's start off with air fry. Move it all the way around, there we go, air fry. The preset comes up at 20 minutes at 200 degrees. Now you can actually adjust both of them manually. You can adjust them all on, on all the settings. Temperature, you can turn your temperature down from 200 degrees 
up to 150. Okay, you can actually go higher actually. So, and you can reduce your time to obviously whatever you want, I suppose. I don't know what the maximum is. Uh, let's see, one hour. One hour back to one well, minute, I assume. So you can adjust all your temperatures, which is really good. Let's switch that off again. Now you have actually got three different functions on this one, which is pretty good. You've got match, you've got sync, and you've got double stack. Double stack pro, actually. It's a new function. I haven't actually seen it on any other air fryer so far. So they have invented something new. So let's start with match to start with. That's the simplest one to go. So press number one. Let's choose what we want to go for. Let's go for air fry. Okay, there we go. Air fry, you press match. Press number two, well, number two comes up automatically, and you press stop. So basically, we're cooking an oven number one, oven number two, same time, same temperature. Basically, so basically, what Match does, it's actually quite noisy this one. Basically, what Match does, um, it basically <coughs> lets you set up one of the ovens and then automatically copies the other one. So you only need to set up one if you want both to run at the same time and the same temperature. Okay, let's have a look at the sync function now. Right, let's start again. Okay, let's go through the sync function now. Like I said, if you have used a Ninja air fryer, or I think most air fryers actually have them, have them on now, the double oven ones, the sync function, but I'll just go through it quickly. Right, number one. So you press oven number one, you choose what you want. Let's go for air fryer, which we have got. You press sync. Okay, we sync, the light comes on. You then press oven number two. And let's press max crisp. So it's gonna be cooking at different times and different temperature. Then we press start, and as you can see, oven number one is on for 20 minutes. Oven number two is only on for two minutes, so oven number two won't come on till oven number one goes down to 10 minutes. So basically, they will finish at exactly the same time, which is really handy. Okay, let's stop that again, and let us go for Double Stack Pro. Uh, right, so number one, all you do is press Double Stack Pro. Well, obviously, you've got to choose, up, choose what setting you want. Let's just go for roast this time. Double stack pro and you just press start. So basically you are now cooking on two levels as far as I'm aware and they should cook more evenly because sometimes I find that air fryers when you cook on the top level compared to the bottom level they actually cook slightly differently and I end up swapping them over. But this time hopefully it's going to cook at the same uh, temperature, same time and, fin and cook exactly the same way. Like I said I am going to be doing a cooking test now so we'll put that to the test. If you are interested in seeing the results of that please, please stay tuned till the end. But okay let's stop this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some food in the air fryers. I'm going to do some chicken breast and some chips. They will be cooking at slightly different times and slightly different temperatures. So I will set that up with the sink function as well. Right, okay, I will see you back in a minute. Right, and there we go. So as you can see, I've double stacked my chicken. That's going to go on the top shelf. And also, I've actually thought I'll try to double stack my chips to see if they come out any different top and bottom. Even though the chips I probably will mix up after a few minutes. Uh, well, after the first part of cooking. So I'm gonna switch it on. Number one, I'm gonna put that on, let's just put that on air fryer. Actually, I think I think that's too hot. I'm actually gonna reduce the temperature. I'm actually gonna reduce the time as well. Temperature on the chicken up is normally, my normal experience should be about 180. I'm gonna reduce the time down to about eight minutes. Now I did initially say I was gonna cook it on the sink function, but I'm actually not gonna cook it on the sink function to start with, I'm gonna cook them both on for about eight minutes. And oven number two, I'm going to put that on max crisp, which is what I would normally use for, for chips if it moves. Yeah, max crisp. And I'm also going to change the time on that down to eight minutes as well. So they will both finish at the same time. And let's start it. Right, okay, as you can see, the timers are both going exactly the same as each other, just cooking at different temperatures. Right, I will see you both back. Well, I'll see, them, see you in eight minutes. Right, okay, as you can see, we're just about coming to the end. Now, I did actually forget to press the double stack, so I did stop it literally straight away, pushed the double stack, as you can see, and restarted it. Now, ninjas always seem to have a cool function, like a cool, cool function at the end. As you can, you can see, it will come up cool, yeah? Cool, cool, which gives it like about a minute to cool down. Now, because I'm actually gonna be putting the chicken and the chips back in again for a few more minutes, um, I don't need that to be on, so I'm gonna stop it, and it does actually stop, which is good. So let's have a look, this is like, Shouldn't be fully cooked yet. I'll be quite impressed if it is actually fully cooked. Let's have a look. And yeah, I mean, it looks pretty good. Obviously not fully cooked like I did ex didn't expect it to be. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to flip them over, leave them in exactly the same positions, flip them over, and see what they're like after another, I would say another four minutes. So let's put the, let's put the chicken back in, but I'm going to flip the bottom one over as well, so don't worry about that. Let's get rid of this fork. Get some clean tongs. Now I did actually wash out the whole air fryer before I used it, obviously, which is what you should always do. And the chips, I'm actually just gonna do nothing with the chips and just put them straight back in for another four, 
maybe five minutes. I think the chip's gonna need a bit longer, but I'm gonna give it another four minutes, same time as the chicken, and we'll see what the life afterwards. But okay, I will see you back in about four minutes. Right, so as you can see, we're just coming to the end now. So in total, it's had 12 minutes. I wouldn't expect the chicken breast to be cooked in my Ninja Megazone after 12 minutes. And the chips as well, at 240 degrees on the chips on Max Crisp. I will be doing up a follow video with this, uh, comparing the Ninja Double Stack, this one, with my Ninja Megazone, which is actually, oh sorry, uh, which is actually my favorite air fryer at the moment. Um, right, okay, so I'm just gonna let this cool, cool function finish. I'll be back in a second. There we go, all done. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get the chicken out. Just gonna just play for the side for a moment. Okay, and there we go. Now I can tell straight from the beginning that the top one is not quite cooked properly. Now they have come up with this idea of having handles on the actual rack, which is a good idea, but they're getting really hot, so I still have to use tongs to take them out. So I'm gonna take out, let's get the plate back to the side. And what I'm gonna do is I am going to be taking out both chickens. Get it off the tray, put it on the plate. There we go. Now I'm going to be cutting them open and seeing how well they've cooked. Okay, let's move this out of the way. And I hope you can see that. You can. Right, so that is the one from the top stack. Now, first of all, let's lift it up. I'm actually going to bring that in a little bit closer for you to look at. Now you can see there's actually still quite a bit of liquid on that one. So that was on the top. I mean, it's not bad, it's not bad, but I would have to say that the bottom one has actually cooked a little bit more than the top one. It's still very, very moist, which is really nice. And what I'm gonna do is cut the inside. In fact, that side's cooked a little bit better than the other side. What I'm gonna do is turn it back over. Plenty of moisture still in there, which is nice. I'm gonna cut them both open and see how they're cooked on the inside. I'd say it's not quite ready. I would actually say that needs probably another two, maybe three minutes. And the one on the bottom, I would say it probably is cooked. Right, so with the chicken, I would, I would say that if you're using the double stack after the first uh, go of cooking it, for let's say for the first eight minutes, actually turn them over. As well as flipping them over, rotate them. So the top one goes to the bottom, the bottom one goes to the top. Let's move that away. I'm gonna actually put them back in for a few more minutes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try the chips. Here we go, I've got another clean plate, I've got my clean tongs. Right, nice bit of steam coming out of that. Let's try one from the top layer. Put it on my plate. Let's see if I can grab one off the bottom without having to take this apart too much. Well, I will actually be mixing the chips up together anyway now. So I'm just going to take that out, move it on the worktop. Let's check the bottom layer, see so if we can try and get a similar sized chip. There we go, let's see how these are cooked. Right, this is one from the top layer. I'm going to try that first. Right, that needs a bit more time. That needs a bit more time. I would actually say with the chips, they've actually cooked fairly, fairly even, evenly. So I'm quite surprised about that. Put them back in. Okay, so what I'm going to do actually also going to be giving the chips another few minutes as well, because none of them have cooked. Now, we'll be interested in comparing it to my Megazone, because I'm pretty sure my Megazone, my Ninja Megazone, they would actually have been cooked by now. If you are interested in seeing that, please subscribe, because I will be doing that video in, on my next upload. Right, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was helpful for you, and thanks for watching.